what a great conference this is being. We are learning things that can help us to be superhuman. We are meeting superhuman people and we're being exposed to superhuman human potential. And today I am here with a little bit of a challenge at uh, this superhuman conference. I am simply going to talk about the science of letting go. I am the daughter of a world-renowned sports psychologist. I, I am the passionate mother of a teenage daughter, and I study the brain. I own a brain lab, but I'm not a neurologist. And uh, I have worked with top athletes, and I am also a therapist. And I'm here to tell you how the science of meditation can help us to increase our health and how we don't need to be meditation experts or Buddhist monks or trained yogis to make a difference. So it is becoming well known that breathing has a fundamental potential to change our brain, to increase performance and to help manage emotions. But it is a common myth that we need to lock ourselves into a room and spend the whole day in solitary meditation. Let me tell you how the science of heart rate variability says otherwise. And let me start with a story. We all like stories, don't we? So after my first degree in political science and working for 10 years in the world of fashion, I decided to get a second education and work in the field of psychology. First job I landed, my father's assistant, assistant. <laughs> they worked at the top soccer team. And I don't know if you know, but in Europe, major soccer teams are a big deal. The parking lot was like a car exhibit. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maseratis, and then my bike. <laughs> the team is called the Chelsea Football Club, and it is owned by a Russian multimillionaire. The team owns a huge, beautiful stadium in downtown London and the biggest training facility in Europe uh, with 32 grass soccer fields. So pretty much my first internship had to do with working with rock stars or superstars. So my dad is a psychophysiologist and what he does, he measures parameters that are associated with psychological and physiological states. So after initial assessments, what he found out that the most dominant factor to be improved at Chelsea was not focus or muscle conditioning or strategy or stamina. In fact, it was fatigue. It was overtraining and under recovery. So what we needed to tell athletes is that they needed to learn how to rest. In a way, they needed to learn how to meditate. And that was scary. Athletes don't like to slow down. Never mind meditate. So the measure to the science of letting go is heart rate variability. This is what we used to track down the letting go ability of some of the highest performing athletes in the world. Some of them had reduced heart rate variability. In fact, it was their inability of letting go that was hindering them in achieving more. What is heart rate variability? It's a very good question. <laughs> Let's start with the heart. I guess that's a good idea. The heart is a muscular organ. What it, uh, it's as big as a fist, more or less, and it weighs on average 300 grams. It pumps uh, blood to every part of our body through 100,000 rhythmic contractions every day. And the key is um, heart rate variability is the variation in the time intervals between those heartbeats. And to understand what's important is the higher variation, AKA the more heart rate variability, the better. So this in a way might seem 
counterintuitive, or at least it, it seemed counterintuitive to me at the beginning, because we're used to think of a low, steady pulse as something healthy and desirable. And yet, heart rate variability is not the same as pulse or heart rate. When we measure pulse, we're measuring how many of those heartbeats do we have in a unit of time. But heart rate variability is not something that we can sense or feel unless with the use of equipment. And uh, it is that subtle variation, oscillation in the heartbeats. So here, what you see is that oscillation in the heart rate, the heart rate constantly changing its speed at which it's beating, speeding up and slowing down. So these oscillations are really important. They define the ability of the organism to respond to stressors, to self-regulate. They indicate flexibility in behavior, uh, uh, ability to adapt to social and environmental changes, which are constantly changing. So with a healthy organism, equilibrium is constantly maintained. With heart rate variability, that co equilibrium is constantly maintained, as opposed as with reduced heart rate variability. So in this other graph, what we see is a client, a patient, that suffers from depression and IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And so you can see how smaller that variation is, how much flatter is that line that defines the heart rate. In fact, low heart rate variability is a strong predictive factor for future health problems and all-cause mortality. Low heart rate variability is associated with depression, like in this case, anxiety, hypertension, panic, post-traumatic stress disorder. So if we want uh, to learn how to be superhuman, I guess we should learn how to be good drivers of our Ferrari. Learning to speed up and learning to slow down. The Ferrari being our system, our organism, our brain. So an easy way to understand this, I guess it's in this graph, this helped me understand it. Here we are marrying, it's a marriage between the heart rate, so the red line, and the blue is the breathing. So here it's clear how breathing in, as you did earlier with Spencer, the heart rate speeds up. Can you see how the red goes up as the blue wave goes up? And most importantly, breathing out, parasympathetic activation. The heart rate slows down. So heart rate variability is a very complex phenomenon. It's a nonlinear interaction between very complex physiological mechanisms, such as the baroreflex, the chemoreceptors. But today, we're simplifying. We're talking about just one aspect of the heart rate variability, which is this dance, this choreography between the doing and the non-doing, doing Breathing in, sympathetic activation, and breathing out, slowing down. So this phenomenon is called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. It's a swear word, almost. <laughs> and uh, the main component of this uh, swear word, of this phenomenon, of, of this aspect of heart rate variability, is a very important nerve, the 10th cranial nerve. Its majesty, there is a crown, the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve connects the back of our brains, so the brainstem, the medulla oblongata, down onto the heart and several other visceral organs. And uh, what this other graph demonstrates is what happens when there is very strong vagal tone, when that majesty, the vagus nerve, is really strong. This is one of the athletes I work with. Uh, his name is Clarence Sedorf. He's very famous back home. I work with him at another football team called Milan AC. And what happens here, look at the difference. Look at the oscillation as he's breathing in and breathing out. He's able to change uh, the heart rate mean 
by more than 40 bits. So the point being is that we can train vagal tone. We can allow ourselves to invite more of the parasympathetic. So years later, after leaving the high-performance athlete world and now working with clinical patients, what I found out is a similar trend or the same trend. We, regular people, get stressed, anxious, or depressed, mainly because of doing too much. Mainly because of too much sympathetic and too little of the parasympathetic. But there is a way how we can fix this, how we can um, achieve more by doing less. Mindfulness is being present in the moment without judgment. And yet there are practices that we can adopt to fine-tune our breathing, to allow the breathing to engage more of the parasympathetic. So if there is one key, to mindful breathing, that is the out-breath. All we need to do is to remember to take a mini vacation at the out of every breath, enjoying the anticipation for the next breath, enjoying the thirst for the next breath. It is that simple. So technology has enabled us to do more. Now it can also enable us to do less alleviate the pain of a warring brain and a racing heart. All you have to do is remember to take a breath, take a break, pause, enjoy the mini vacation at the out of every breath. And you will live longer if you do. Thank you. <laughs>